how did this come to your attention? Oh, it came to my attention, you know, basically through out-of-town friends, quite frankly. Um, I never received word officially through the Board of Selectmen liaison to public safety, nor the chairman of the board. Um, so it basically came to my attention quite quickly through friends of ours that live out of town. And were you bothered by that, that you didn't get any no notification? Do you think you should have as a selectman? Absolutely, very much so. I was the liaison to public safety my first year in office. And whenever anything came about, I would call the other two selectmen to make sure they were appraised of a situation, whatever it was. If somebody on uh, one of their constituents or whatever, or somebody on the street asked them a question, you know, what's going on with whatever, they were aware of the situation. Um, just so that they were up to speed. That's how I kept them informed, um, and that was it. And I thought that, you know, that should have been a matter of business, and it, it wasn't, especially in this case. I felt that the board should have had an immediate emergency meeting, you know, to, to get this under control, um, to find out what assessed the situation, and then map out a course of action that we would take to determine the final outcome. Uh, quite frankly, uh, in my business, or my military career, you know, that's what would have happened. Um, you immediately take action and then move forward, uh, initiate an investigation and move forward. Um, and, I, and, you know, it didn't seem to be happening. You know, we didn't meet for December 10th, I believe, was the event. Um, we didn't meet until sometime around the 20th or something like that, if I remember correctly. Did you have telephone conversations with your fellow selectmen? Not one. Sometime thereafter, the chief called me, um, probably right before it was going to get picked up by the media, and he called me directly. What did he tell you? He assessed me of a situation that had occurred. Um, get into the details at all? Um, he didn't get into the details that eventually were, in that telephone conversation, that were eventually uh, put in the police report. Um, he explained to me what would happen, and he, you know, basically explained to me that, you know, it was a, an issue that he had with medication. I basically told him that, you know, at that point in time, I had some concerns, and that I felt that uh, rather than me discussing my concerns with him, I wanted to meet with the, the entire board to discuss it with the board amongst, amongst all of us. It was decided that, that nothing was going to be said that evening, uh, which I disagreed with. I thought the public was owed an explanation, um, and at that point in time, it was decided uh, that, that no explanation was going to be forthcoming. Um, and without getting into the specifics of the executive session and dialogue that transpired and words that were said amongst the board members and discussion with the chief, um, that was basically the final outcome on that evening, and, and I was a bit frustrated with that. I thought that absolutely, positively, the town, the citizens of the town needed to have a statement from the board because we were discussing an issue with the senior law enforcement official for the town. It was our responsibility to see that his credibility was restored. And then, in my mind, the only way to do that was an external investigation, separate from, from any politics, separate from, from anything that's going on in the town, because we needed to restore his credibility so that he could stand up in front of that department and lead that department unequivocally uh, the way it should be led. And more importantly, he could stand in front of the citizens of this town and say to them, you know, this is what happened, you know, one way or the other based on the outcome. Uh, but he could lead and stand in front of the citizens of the town and represent our community. Do you believe it compromises the chief that, in effect, if you don't go through that process, then it's viewed as a whitewash, whether, whether he has an explanation or he doesn't? Let's put aside the set of facts, but the process, if you don't go through that process, then there will be people always out there saying, hey, they, they blew it off. And that may be unfair to the chief. I, I concur with you, Jim, on that. I, I do, uh, you know, very uh, adamant about that. that uh, perception is created when it appears that, that we're not doing the right thing, that we're sweeping it under the table, so to speak. We had an executive session on January 3rd prior to the open meeting for the uh, Board of Selectmen. It was discussed during that executive session, and that was the first I'd heard of it. That Mr. Leffert had taken it upon himself. That is correct. Obviously rejecting your suggestion that they go outside the department. Evidently. And that was what Mr. Foley and Mr. Leffert were going to base their 
they anyway were going to base their decision on that. Well, it seems that that was the case. So this decision to resign from the board uh, was not a spur of the moment decision. Uh, it was well thought out, well planned, uh, and it was based on uh, significant reasons. The, the decision of the board that evening of January 3rd not to take any action uh, with the situation with our police chief uh, certainly reinforced my decision. Do you buy the chief's story of what happened that night? Um, you know, I'll reserve my comment until or if there's ever an a formal investigation. Um, I've been around long enough to have a pretty good idea of how things transpire. Um, and, and I'm certainly, uh, so as not to, to make a decision one way or the other, I think that the board didn't do the right thing. The chief's credibility has to be restored uh, before we can move on. If he's going to stay in that position, if he's going to continue to lead that department, that needs to be done. That question can't be left open because I'm not sure it's going to get any better and it'll probably fester and get worse. If you had, final question, if you had any other discussions either with him or your fellow selectmen since all of this is no, going down? No, none. We've had limited discussions, as I said. You know, and, and, and as I told you before, when I was a liaison of that department, whenever an issue came up, if it was a police-related issue and incidents took place in town, I let the other two selectmen know so that they were aware of what was going on in their town because their vote was as equal to mine. And keeping them informed was what I felt was a priority for me as well as working with the public safety departments. Your relationship prior to this with the chief, did you have a good working relationship? I thought we did. We were, I worked, like I said, I worked with him pretty closely for over a year, you know, and that's why I think that it was extremely important that it was our responsibility to restore his credibility and sweeping it under the carpet did not make sense to me.